donuts, man. I haven't had a donut in like a year. Isn't that, isn't that kind of weird? Wait, we're rolling? We rolling? We rolling right now? Oh, okay. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Welcome back to uh, Business From Scratch. I'm Tarun Verma. And on this second episode, I wanna talk about architecture. Because when you go to build your business, that's one of the first things that you're going to your world is just going to become you're going to learn so many facets of architecture which is it's really fascinating it's really cool and i'm glad that i did this from scratch because i learned so much i mean i could build anything now like i, I could design anything now um for learning purposes i wish like i don't know if i can just show you guys all the the blueprints and stuff i i don't i don't know if that's legal or even like even the kind of the smaller stuff here um, you know what let's just avoid lawsuits in general let's just not uh, I'm, I, I don't think I can show you this stuff but what I will do is I'll break down kind of the basic layout in a very rudimentary form and kind of just show it to you that way so um, before we get into this though one of the most important things that the architectures told me, the uh, sorry, the architectures, the architects told me is that don't design your place for right now, design it for the future. What does that mean? It means allow yourself to be able to grow into that space. So it doesn't matter how many square feet that you take out of your business. It could be a thousand, it could be 1500, it could be 2000, it could be 3000, right? Point is don't design it for right now, design it for five years from now when your business has expanded it does well and you bring in a lot of employees meaning spatially you need to be able to have space for everyone to be able to work workstations or whatever your business is about right so i kind of talk about it in terms of pharmacy because that's what i'm doing here obviously but i want to make this so general enough that like this applies to anybody doing anything whether you're building a restaurant liquor store gas stations what have you right doesn't matter the concepts are still the same so build for five years from now. So I took out 1,500 square feet approximately. Uh, a lot of people told me, that's, that's small. You're, you're gonna grow out of it very, very quickly. I had other pharmacy owners tell me, man, in five years, like I'm, I'm at capacity. Like I, I don't have shelf space. I don't have room for people. Like business is doing well. And it, you know, it's a good problem to have, knock on wood. It's a good problem to have. But they were like, try to avoid that if you can. So that was in my head with all my architects is how do I spatially arrange for everything? And then I first thought about it. What is the maximum capacity that kind of like a specialty pharmacy can do? I'm looking at about five to seven people kind of tops. So, okay, five to seven people. Let's just take seven people. I always err on the side of, of, of caution and I always play it conservative. Seven people. Can I fit seven people in this space so i started to design 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 okay and then you have to think about workflow okay so seven people in workflow you don't want people tripping over each other you don't want them running into each other you don't want it to feel cramped right and then you're gonna have boxes you're gonna have tons and tons of like boxes and vials and caps and who knows whatever and so you need to be able to have space for all that and not suffocate yourself so I thought about it, and again, I used a lot of other pharmacies as an example, as a blueprint, and then I kind of went off of it and did my own thing. So um, let's see here. I think let, let's get right into this. So kind of looking into this, we start off with uh, the doors to come into the pharmacy, right? Here's my waiting room, um, and then you know, there's my little checkout station right there. And then you're able to go through the double doors uh, and now you're into my main pharmacy area, kind of where I'm sitting right now. In fact, this counter that you see right here, this is my brain. This is what I call the brain. It's a massive island, kind of like a kitchen island. Okay, again, unorthodox if you've never seen a specialty offbeat kind of pharmacy because it doesn't look like your normal Walgreens CVS pharmacy. This is very different. So you got your brain right here. At the capacity of it, at the height of its Capacity, I guess you're gonna be able to fit one two three four different workstations that are fully functional I mean we're printing labels we're, we're shipping stuff. We're doing everything from here We're able to verify the pharmacists and technicians are within arm's length to each other They'll be able to talk to each other interact with each other and you don't have to move too much. That's the key You don't have to move much right and then and then you get into here, you have open spaces where all the shelvings and things are gonna go and other things like that. Or, you know, it's just empty space, whatever I wanna do with it. 
So right in the future, you can move things around, you could rearrange things, it's cool. Then you go into the back here, you got the break room, you know, you got the essentials there, and then you have access to the bathroom from there. And then you come out here, and uh, I'm not gonna go too much into these, because this gets into kind of like proprietary info, I can't divulge a lot of that, but those are my compounding rooms, and what I've done with them, how I've arranged them, that's a little different, but for our purposes, we're talking about spatial arrangement. So we don't have a lot of people moving around too much and they don't need to. You're obviously gonna have one person up here checking people out, you know, and maybe the, this person is the same as this person who's working over here. They see people come in, they come out, check them out, etc. And then you have people working on the compound room rooms, you know, maybe one to two, one to two. So four people there, another four people here. Actually, we're at eight. Wow. Okay. So I did design this to actually take on more people. So with 1,500 square feet, a lot of people said it's, it's gonna come small, man. It's gonna come small. So that was issue number one that I was able to dodge. I'll get into that a little bit later. The second thing was a lot of people said, with pharmacy, there are record keeping that's necessary. I mean, there's so much record keeping going on. Uh, you have to hold on to prescriptions, files, all this stuff for like seven to 10 years. Uh, and so you need space for that and you have to keep it on site. Now there are places to, to do offsite stuff, but that's if you really get enough. So I was like, okay, I need to plan enough storage space to be able to handle all that record keeping along with all the stuff that we're going to need on a day-to-day -day basis. We got vials and caps and drugs and all this stuff going on. And so I built so much, and this is what they call it, mill work. I built so much mill work into it. And so um, I don't know if I can, I think my lawyer told me not to do a 360 of the pharmacy because then you kind of see a little bit too much. but. All around me, you can kind of see, I guess you, you can kind of see like the um, the shelves. I have shelves all around me. So getting back to this shebanga bang, all around me, I have shelvings above, below, at waist level. I mean, everywhere. I just have so much storage space to be able to do anything with it. And, and five to seven years from now, I don't think I'm going to grow out of it because I have so much. I, I've had other pharmacists come in here and, and go, hey, you know, give me, give me your two cents since we're still building this. And they just go, whoa, you got a lot of storage space, man. That's right. I'm like going on Ikea right now. I got so I got storage for days. Did I tell you that I lost the stapler? Like I still haven't found the stapler. It's in a drawer somewhere. I just don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. So that was a good move on my part. And yeah, the mill work did come out to be a little bit expensive, but it also doubles up as the aesthetic. So this pharmacy is a, no lie, it's a sexy looking pharmacy, right? I got this whole like gray and white theme going on. I got these really clean counters, uh, easy to clean, but really sexy, shiny looking. So it kind of doubled up as the aesthetic to the pharmacy too, because people are gonna be able to look in here and um, there's a massive like window that you can just look through my pharmacy and, and, and kind of get a feel for what's going on and you get a straight shot into the compounding rooms which are behind me right there and you can see people making medications so it's kind of sexy. It's kind of like when you go into a restaurant and you can see people making their own pasta and the pizzas and all that. So that, that's kind of the idea. Um, I originally was thinking about putting the compounding way up in the front so you could see them do everything but then there, there there's privacy issues with that because people, um, customers might see HIPAA information, um, like people's confidential data births, things like that. We, we wanted to avoid that. So we ended up just being prudent and sticking it back there. Although I really wanted to do this cutting edge pharmacy where we were able to move it up front, but I didn't want to get in trouble with um, HIPAA privacy laws. So then we, you know, we moved it back there, but you, but you still got a really great window there. You can still people, see people doing stuff and I arranged the compounding rooms in a way where it's very transparent. You can see everything, which is pretty cool. Um, so that was there, uh, spatially. So the, so the way that everything was kind of planned to be is that, you know, workflow wise, if we go back to it, only a few people are really able, are really moving around because a lot of other people don't need to move around. If you're in the compounding rooms, you're just kind of relegated there. You don't really move too much unless you need to come out and speak to someone, which again, there's, there's plenty of room for it. But really, like people here can run over to get drugs from here, bring it back, and and so it was meant to minimize running around, getting in each other's way because that gets very frustrating. Again, you you have to build on your own experiences here. I've been in plenty of pharmacies where people just get in the way, and you're like, you know what? None of this is arranged efficiently. And efficient is my middle name. It's my middle name. My parents gave it to me. It's like my birth middle name, Tarun, efficient Verma. That has a ring to it, doesn't it? It's got a ring to it. But efficiency was it was a big part of everything. 
because the more cluttered and crowded you are, the more you limit how many people can work here and you're limiting how much your facility can really make. I mean, we're this is a business at the end of the day. We wanna make money, we wanna do good, we wanna expand. I wanna be able to give jobs to people and I wanna be able to house a lot of people here. This is my baby. So if I can get, you know, eight to nine people or, you know, let's, let's keep it conservative, let's like say seven to eight people, we should be able to do this, you know, in X amount of years, whenever it is that we grow into it. So that was always the intent behind it. So always spatially think about your workflow. You know, how are you going to get A through B to C all the way down to Z done in your space? You know, whether you're a restaurant or whatever, uh, with restaurants, waiters coming, uh, the wait staff coming and going to the, to the kitchen and back. Is it, is it cluttered? Is it crowded? Can people see into it? How is it? Always think about this stuff. So workflow is huge for me because the architects, they can't tell you that. They can just advise you, hey, this might be smart to do, but you have to know your craft first. You have to know your business and know how you want to design things. And, and once you have your workflow, they help you a lot. They really guide you on how it's best to be able to build this, how far out or in to build this. And that becomes so important. So, uh, I think that kind of covers everything as far as, um, architecture goes because your whole life kind of becomes about that. And then two, oh yeah, you know what? You got to think about all the other things. You got to think about electricity. So when you think about your space and you think about where you're going to be putting your workstations and this and that, where, where are people doing everything? Like kind of, uh, if we, if we were to go back to this, where are people doing things? So where do you need power? Where do you need internet? Are you going to be hooking computers there? Are you going to be doing something else there? And that you have to plan this stuff out in advance. You're like, but I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Then build extra. I outfitted this place with so much electricity and, and data. It is insane. I could honestly hook up. I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're like, I could honestly hook up like 20 computers with internet in here. There's no need for that ever. But you know, with phones and everything like that, a lot of you have to also plan about what's going to happen with technologies. Nowadays, a lot of phone lines go over uh, cat lines and things like that. So you don't need phone lines. I only have one actual phone line in this whole place. Everything else is through through online access. It's all Cat Six lines, state of the art, high uh, high speed Cat Six lines, and we're able to do computers and everything through there. And so. Uh, and electricity, tons and tons of electricity. I hate to say it now, but no technician of mine should ever be like, I can't find an outlet to plug in my phone. You shouldn't be on your phone when you're at work. I'm not going to tell you this again, right? But so much electricity everywhere because you never know. This is a tech-based business. We got printers, faxes, computers, imaging this, imaging that, and we have like three different sets of printers for, for stuff, shipping labels, bottle labels, uh, package insert labels. So you need a lot of electricity. So I built a lot of circuit boards in here because you don't want anything to short out. Things short out, things turn off, and then business is, 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 to, is halted. Can't have that. So you got to plan this stuff in advance. Um, and then like, so in the waiting room, a lot of people were like, well, aren't you going to put in a TV in there? I was like, I could. But most people just sit on their phone, don't they? Exactly. So I didn't put a TV in there. My waiting room's really small to begin with. The idea is people aren't sitting around waiting for me. I've already got their stuff ready. That's the intent. So I squeezed down, I squeezed down my waiting room. I could have made the waiting room a lot bigger, but I was like, you know what? Majority of what's going on is gonna be happening all through here, not here. Hopefully the idea is someone comes in, maybe it just has to wait just a couple of minutes and they'll just sit on their phone, they'll Facebook, they'll do whatever. So I don't need to make the space bigger to accommodate for like TV and make like a little soda, whatever. I, I, I guess I could do like drinks and soda eventually if I feel like people are sitting and waiting for a while, but the, that's not the intent. We got some space here where we're gonna be uh, selling stuff out of, you know, OTC products, uh, beauty products, beauty creams, uh, protein powders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna sell those out in the front here. Um, so really, your, your space, my space in the waiting room kind of just, just that one closed in really quickly, but I built it very, very small. A lot of people told me, you don't need a lot of waiting room space, don't do it. So again, and then, and then the idea is that we're moving product, we're getting people in and out quick, so they're not really having to sit around too much. So 
um, you know, in execution, I'll, I'll make another video and I'll let you know whether that was a good idea or not to make the waiting room so small. But um, as of now, it just feels right because it gave the pharmacy more space and I could have more people working in here comfortably. Um, and yeah, so, so we went over electricity, we went over internet, where you're gonna be putting your computers. Um, you know, a lot of it really has to do with finding a really, really good architecture firm. And once you do that, um, things are a lot easier because I had to learn everything one-on-one -on -one from scratch. So uh, figuring everything out was was new. It was exciting though, it was, it was exciting. Don't, the thing about this whole process is whenever you start from scratch, enjoy the journey. Because if, you, if you're not going to enjoy the journey, then it's kind of almost like no point in doing it. <clears throat> Through the process, I think I had so much fun in the architecture phase because it was all theoretical. I'm a nerd, right? I went to school for so many years. Of course, I'm a nerd. So for this stuff, I love it. I love this stuff. So to be able to plan, okay, well, where are people going to go? How are they going to rotate our spatial arrangement? How are we going to get things in and out? What's the best workflow process and you have to make all that stuff up yourself right you go into a corporation people have already done this for you right they're already like here's your workflow here's it and they just want you to work but i had the ability to be able to create this from scratch which was just so cool so i enjoy it uh if you guys get into this too i hope you really kind of enjoy the architecture process or bring somebody in like your business partners or, or your you know someone close to you who enjoys this stuff more because if you don't get it right from inception, your execution will falter. And that's the big thing. In, uh, inception to execution. That's been the whole kind of thesis behind all these videos that I'm making from with, with business from scratch is how I went from something that was in my head and how I was able to bring it out into the world. So you need to spend a lot of time conceptualizing your space, your business, before you actually get into the nook and cranny of it because once you've executed and you start building, there's kind of no going back. I mean, you can go back, but then it wastes a lot of money. And if you got the money, you know, do you. But I didn't have all that much money, so I was very careful with how I spent my money. So um, I hope that helps, guys. I hope it was uh, illuminating, it was helpful. Um, and leave us comments down in the video below. Let us know what you want me to kind of share with you when it comes to the business process. I hope this is helpful in every way and thanks for tuning in and uh check us out in episode three i'm gonna actually take you on site you know rewinding the timeline back and i'll get you in the space before the back when it was just a lot of dirt and and, and drywall and stuff so pretty exciting episode coming up stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next time on business from scratch thanks guys bye, -bye.